Welcome to our Grace Life YouTube channel. We would love for you to like or subscribe to this channel and really be a part of our online family and community. We hope that you enjoy today's message. Well, the greatest awakening happens because as we pray, I love, can you just stand up? I ain't going to have you talk, but Anthony, would you stand up? Just stand up. We, come on, give it up for Anthony Hunt. You were a lineman at Geneva, right? You won like the college Super Bowl. Go ahead, you can sit down. Anthony gave a testimony yesterday. You need to go ask him about what God did in his life in the 21 days of prayer, huh? Just opened to eyes a bunch of stuff. In the mornings, we're praying here as a team, and he's like our center or guard or something, but he's sitting back here, and the Spirit of God gets all over him. Is that true? And just revealed all kind of stuff. And the reality is we don't want that just for me, you, Anthony, but for everyone. Seeing and knowing, revelation, going to a whole nother level. How many believe that? Amen? So I made these statements, and I want you to hear this today, that, that how can we do anything without prayer? prayer? Prayer is the power plan of the church. When you talk about prayer, people say in our nation, praise God, the politicians want to get prayer back in the school. But I say we get prayer back in the church first. Can I have an amen? So, so that means that every person's going to connect and go to another level simply because the water, the wetness, the Spirit of God is falling here in this place, in this city. Amen? And as God's Spirit is falling, as we're praying, the eyes of our hearts are being enlightened. We're seeing clearly the purpose of the church and our purposes. We're knowing. Our, our kids are seeing and knowing. They're doing the will of God. And so I, I feel like the heartfelt prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available and is dynamic and it's working. So here's what God challenges us. Jeremiah 33, 30 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. How many know Grace Life Church? We're a church where we get our prayers answered. Amen? And it's normal. When we pray the prayer of faith, that means we believe that we receive when we pray. Get ready. I can't get ready to show you the new details of what God's doing. So as we have some 2,800 people that call this their church home, we're going to have soon a, an opportunity to be in a place where we can seat over 1,000 people. How many know that will be wonderful? Amen? Why is that important? Because more people can come to know Jesus. Amen? So when you hear the plan that's revealed, you're going to be so excited. But it all starts with being a house of prayer, not just playing church and checking the box. A church that's a church of prayer is a powerhouse. A church that teaches its men to pray is a powerhouse. Amen? This isn't just a place where, and, and we're thankful for the women of God in the house. Amen? That are flourishing. But we want men to lead and stand up and be male leaders in their homes. They preached it to men's great job, Brady, yesterday. Act like men. He says in Corinthians, act, say it out loud, men. Act like men. Act like men. men pray. Yes. The first move of the Holy Ghost was on 300 men. The, the fish were fed with 5,000 men and then women and children. What's God saying through his word? He wants us to lead, right? So if we fail in prayer, we fail everywhere. I want to look into the eyes of the men. If we fail in prayer, we fail everywhere. If we're not praying, we're playing. I like what Smith Wigglesworth said. He said, there's, there's not, I don't pray more than five minutes, but not more than five minutes go by that I don't pray. And so here's our scripture today as we open. He says, rejoice all the time. I love that. Now, now can I, can you just, can you just, can you get vocal real quick when I say Rejoice. Oh, man, you, you're, you're good. Say rejoice. rejoice. So here's the scripture. It says rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Never stop. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning, say, me. me. So is it God's will to rejoice when you feel like it or all the time? Is it God's will that you pray when you feel like it or all the time? Is it God's will that you give thanks? He said, in everything give thanks because this is God's will in Christ Jesus. How many are in Christ Jesus? Amen. Concerning you. So when you don't know what to do, rejoice, pray, or give thanks. So I looked at this and I seen Romans 13. It said, be sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted and taking care of the day-to-day -day obligations that you lose track of time and doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about over. The dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. 
You know, I think this is so important that one time a couple years ago, I was sleeping. Anybody sleep here? You don't sleep? Say amen to sleep. You don't sleep. I get angry. My wife gets really angry when she doesn't sleep. She's sweet as can be. You wake her up at 3 in the morning, you'll see a different side. But, but one night, and this is the way usually our one nights go, is that I go to sleep before her. I like getting up super early. She likes staying up late. And usually that dumb warm blanket's on, wearing some onesie with like, all nestled in, got the pillows propped up, got Hallmark Channel on, horses walking around, high school sweetheart, you know what's going to happen in those movies, they're so predictable, they put you to sleep, but it's like she thinks it's love, I'm like, whatever, watching Hallmark, I come in, I get my eye mask, I put it on, I, sometimes if it's loud, I put my earplugs in, but this particular night, I went. I had a long day of work. Anyone ever had a long day of work? I went to sleep, and I went into the seventh dimension of sleep. I was in deep. I couldn't hear anything, couldn't think anything. But it was probably 1.32 in the morning, and supposedly this is how it was described. I was sleeping, and I'm not a loud snorer, I don't think, but I was doing this number. I was sleeping, and I was in a deep dream, and I was, I was like, she didn't know this, of course, so I'm going, I'm going, <gasps> she said it was like 60, 70 seconds, <gasps> and I'm doing this for 20 minutes, she's looking over like, he must be having a heart attack or something, something's going on. So she grabs my side and goes, babe, wake up, and I'm like, run! What's going on? You just disturbed me. I was in the Bahamas riding on a dolphin, and I was going under the water, and I was coming back up for air, and I was going under the water and coming back up for air, and it was the most peaceful thing in the world. There was palm trees I could see in the distance, and why'd you wake me up? And that's the title today of my message is Shake Me to Wake Me. Because I believe if you grab somebody and wake them up, pull them out of their slumber, because God's doing some really cool things right now in the world. And we got to be shouted with me, wide awake. wide awake. Father, help us to be awake and open to what you're doing. And it all begins with prayer. Help us to have such a good connection with you that we're like the sons of Issachar. We understand the times in that we live, and we know what we ought to do. Because whoever finds God finds. So, last week we left off with this prayer of faith. But if I'm going to shake you, to wake you out of the slumber of this world, out of the slumber of the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the temporary, to get your focus more on the eternal. Eternal things are what really matter. Heaven and earth will so, soon be passed. Only what's for, done for eternity will last. So as I look at this last week, we left off with, we want to pray in faith, right? We want to pray in faith. So I wrote in my notes that the spirit of faith has a response. A spirit of faith has a response. And so I just wrote in my notes that your faith is awakened by your voice. Yeah. I'm going to say that again. Your faith is awakened by your voice, not my voice. Your faith is awakened by your voice. Parents moved. Love you, Mom. My mom sits over there. She's been faithful for years. I won't tell you how old she is. She'll slap me. But you know what? We, we left here and went to Bible school in the 70s. My mom and dad moved. And I went to this school, great school, nothing against it. It was a Baptist origination. But they were from the place of actually where Pastor Ray went, Bob Jones University. How many know about Bob Jones University, Greenville, South Carolina? Well, I went to this school where they, they taught the word as much as they knew, but how many know, you know, to poison someone, all you need to do is give a dog a steak and put a little bit of poison on it. That's all you need, just a little bit of poison. And so 
We went to this Baptist school when I was sixth grader, and I was learning how to pray. And every morning in Bible class, Ken Keltner, my teacher, was my, also my coach, he was like, we're going to learn to pray today. So who has a prayer request? And kids would raise their hand, and I, I, I'm going to pray for my aunt. And they'd go, they'd go, okay, we're going to pray for his aunt, Lord. If it be thy will, heal his aunt. What about you? My dad needs a job. If it be thy will, hopefully his dad gets a job. Uh, what else? Uh, we're, we're suffering from this. If it be thy will, help here. If, if it be thy will. It was this, it was this prayer that was just like, kind of like, if God's will is, but God's will is his word. God's will is his word, so we pray his word, right? We know it's God's will. By his stripes, we are. It's, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your So we know what his word is. He said this is the confidence we have in him. 1 John 5, 14, if we ask anything according to his will, we know he hears us. And if he hears us, we know of the petitions desired of him, right? So how many know the Bible says you have not because you or you ask with wrong motives. So he tells us we ought to ask, and that's vocal, and that's verbal. But I, w- I was just a sixth grader. I was learning how to pray, grew up in a good home, and Christian home. And one guy said this. He said, how about you, prayer requests? And he goes, I have an unspoken. I never heard that before. Sixth grader, I looked at unspoken? Yeah, unspoken. What about you? Unspoken, unspoken. And this kid, Julian, raised his hand. I don't know if he's being funny. He said, I have 13 unspokens. And I thought in my mind, if you have an unspoken request, you're probably going to get an unspoken answer. Because if you think about it, it looks religious and it sounds holy, but it's not verbal or vocal. And the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So when I got to going back to the book of beginnings about a spirit of faith is awakened by its voice, We see that a spirit of faith is vocal. You are designed as a speaking spirit. Your faith is not vocal. It's not at all. Your words carry weight, and they create our world with our words. Genesis 2, 7. I love this because this is the very Genesis, the book of beginnings. And here's what God decrees. He says, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils. I love this in the Hebrew, the breath of life. Well, well, God brings a dirt bag. He gets some dirt, a dust. He gathers up some dust, and he makes this thing called a man. It probably looked like a mannequin because it was standing there like nothing doing, right? But then God says specifically he breathes into, not his mouth, his nostrils, (sighs) his own life. That's the word zoe, the God kind of life. He breathed his breath into us, and man became a living soul. Man became a speaking spirit. And how did he make you? He made you in his image and his likeness, and he made you for dominion. And the psalmist says in Psalms chapter 8, and he says, what is man that you are mindful of him? And what is the son of man that you visitest him? Yet you have made him a little lower. King James, angels, wrong original Hebrew, you made him a little lower than Elohim or God himself. You were made in the God class. Come on, say that's the word, Pastor. You're not a God. You're a man created in God's image and God's likeness. You are created. Listen to what he says. And I, and I crowned him. Here's your crown today. I crowned him with glory and honor and dignity and value and worth and psalms 139 says you are fearfully and wonderfully made all the days of your life were written in a book before you ever lived one of them oh how good is god listen so you stop for a minute and you go well wait see because most people think well if it be thy will whatever god wants will be a sarasra whatever will be will be now god is very intentional He created you on purpose for a purpose, for he said, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, Jeremiah 29, 11, plans to prosper you, to give you a hope and you a future, an expected end. My plans are to prosper you, not to harm you. Come on, say God is good. So if God is a good God, Genesis 2, 19, a couple scriptures later, and out of the ground the Lord again formed, Beasts of the field, fowls of the air. He brought them. Whoa, 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 whoa. He brings them to Adam. He brought those animals to Adam to see what he would call them. Whoa, wait, 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 Pastor, just a minute. 
So you're created for dominion and authority and value and worth and crown you with honor and glory. To see whatsoever Adam called every living thing. And that was the name thereof. So God brings these things, these creatures, and says, Adam, go ahead, I delegate to you the same power and authority. And I give it to you. And Adam's standing there going, never been to university, didn't have Google, didn't have a dictionary. He just had direct revelation from God. How many know prayer gets us back direct revelation? To see and to know and have revelation, to know our business to be excellent at what God's called us to do, to know how to run a business, to know how to teach that class in school, to know the next step, to know who to marry, to have revelation for relationships, to know how to raise your kids. Come on, say revelation. revelation. Connection with God gets us this revelation. It means to be revealed, to see, to know. So Adam had direct downloads. Giraffe, hippopotamus, dog, cat, snake, pig, and, and, and he's horse, and he's just, he's just, he's verbalizing what God gave him, and he's breathing into this, into that, into the other. Well, wait, Pastor. She so tells us right here that we are co-creators with God. We're made in his image, his likeness. And then the Hebrews 4, 2, listen to what it says. Those people in, were in the wilderness, heard God's good news. Someone shout good news. Good news. Just as we have heard it, faith comes by. It's important for you to hear the word. Not, not a bunch of watered down church jargon. The word, amen? amen. Come on, say the word. the word. So they heard the good news just as we had heard it, but the message they heard did not do them any good since it wasn't combined with faith. There's two places you're in today. You're either in faith or fear. You're either in faith or doubt and unbelief. You're either believing and expecting and you're, you're, on, you're on the edge of your seat because this isn't my word, it's heaven's word. And you're going, yes, I'm in expectation. I have great expectancy. I believe something good is going to happen to me. Some will say today. today. How many believe it? Before this service is over, you're going to leave different. You're going to leave healed. A miracle, we aren't just singing this for fun. A miracle can happen now. Amen. We believe, we anticipate the inevitable supernatural intervention of God. That's why we're excited. That's why we sing. That's, is that music a little too loud for you? I like it. Come on, say, heaven's going to be loud. Heaven's going to be verbal. Heaven's going to be vocal. So the Bible says, before I finish this scripture, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, we having the same spirit of faith. How many have a spirit of faith? Can I explain something to you? There's some people that are saved, but they don't have a spirit of faith. They have a spirit of doubt and unbelief. They're Christians, but they're depressed. Everything's negative. Nothing ever works out. And they verbalize, they vocalize that, how bad everything is, how sad everyone is. The Bible says, put the word in your heart and speak it out of your mouth. Because, where is it, Matthew 12? For out of the abundance or the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you put the word in and the word comes out, you create your world with your words. What Jesus say in Mark 11, have the God kind of faith, faith that speaks. Whoever says unto the mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, doesn't doubt in his heart, believe whatever he says, he'll have whatever he... That's, that's Jesus said that. It's written in red. You don't have what the pastor say. You don't have what the Bible says. You have what you say. How many have depression? Don't tell us. People are about to go, how many have a toe jam today? How many have halitosis? Keep it to yourself. Ah, and that's all they talk about. My, a guy said to me the other day, my old Arthur. I said, who's Arthur? Arthur Ritus. I just, my Arthur's been with me for years. I just can't get rid of Arthur. By my, his stripes, we are healed. I don't want arthritis. I say I have healing. I don't have depression. I have joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I see, I'm, I'm pastor, I've just been confused for 20 years. Say, I see and know. No. You've got to decree something, and it will be established for you, and the light of God's favor will shine upon your way. But he says in this scripture, we having the same spirit of faith as it is written, like these guys, Joshua and Caleb, I have believed. Who believes? And therefore I have spoken. Ready? This is all together. We believe and therefore speak. Can everyone say yes? yes? How many know the promises of God are? 
they're all yes and amen. So if the promises of God are yes and amen, here's, here's the scenario. We'll move to point two. got to get this. It says back to Hebrews 4. So you're a speaking spirit. You have the same spirit of faith as it is written. We believe, therefore we speak. But then he says, these people didn't believe the good news. They believed the bad news. Numbers 13 says 12 people, 12 tribes of Israel. God gives them a report. Go up and get the land I've given you. It's already yours, right? What if I said to you, I got a will and testament for you. I'm going to give it to you, and it's already, get, it's already paid for. It's done. It's yours, right? You just go give me it. Show me where it says it, and I'll go walk on the land I own, the new house I own, the stuff I Show me what it is. I'll go get it. Is that easy to understand? So God gives them the will and testament. Go scout out the land, says one spy for all the 12 tribes. They go up. The 10 spies looking around, and these two guys with the Bible says a different spirit. Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit. How many know Grace Life? We have a different spirit. A spirit of faith. Anything is possible. A miracle can happen. Today you're getting healed of cancer. Come on. Well, uh, praise the Lord, brother. Brother Big Butt. No, no, no. God's a healer. He's a good God. Right? That's yours. Healing's yours. Provision's yours. Joy's yours. Peace is yours. Righteousness is yours. Everything in God is yes. It's not no, it's yes. So these guys come back and they're stepping on the ground going, they come back to give the report and, and Joshua says like this, man, there's big walls. The land flows with milk and honey. The water drinks the water of the rain of heaven. It's not going to be hard. Everything's green. He said, and, and, and he said that there's fruit. Here's some of it. These grapes, look at them, pomegranates. Look at the coconuts. Look at the size of the, the fruit is beautiful. This is awesome. He's in this faith mode. How many know faith mode is excited all the time? Faith mode's not depressed. Faith mode's like, yes, it belongs to us. See, there's things in the spirit you can't see that are yours now. You just can't see them. You have to learn to see with the eye of faith because we walk by faith, not by too many Christians live in my what they say, well, my kids aren't serving God. They're just smoking the wacky weed and acting like the devil, and I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm having a good time in Jesus. You're not. You're concerned about your kids. But you need to start speaking. All my children are taught of the Lord, and great is their peace. You've got you to gotta verbalize. You've got to vocalize. You've got to get your words or power for containers. You choose what they're filled with. See, his word in your mouth is as powerful as his word in his mouth. That's the way God designed it. So the 12 guys, typical 10, 10 guys, 10 guys of the 12, eh, we can't do it. We can't do it. Listen to what they said. We can't do it. We're not able. How many Christians don't think they're able? My Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I have the mind of Christ. I have the power of God. The same power that rose Christ from the dead dwells in me. It quickens my mortal body. Is that the word? We got to believe his word, right? So you go, these 10 guys, no, we can't. The walls are too big. The giants are too big. In fact, they started naming the families of the giants. The sons of Anak, the sons, these people, these people, they're all bigger than us. And we, in our own eyes, look like grasshoppers to them. They already predetermined they were losers. Say, loser. They, they, they said, we're losers. How many people today don't know who God is in them? Don't know the bigness and the goodness of God. We can't go up. We can't do it. And here's, let, let me move on. They brought up an evil report. You know what God's waiting for you? God, God will do what he wants. No, he won't. God can do nothing for humanity unless someone ask him. That's what prayer is. We ask according to his will and according to his word. They said, we can't, we can't, we can't. They brought up an evil, God hates evil reports. God doesn't want to hear unbelief and doubt. He wants to hear of what his word says is true and we can do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think according to the power that's not out in heaven, the power that is working in us now. Come on, say his power is working in me now. So number one, a spirit of faith is awakened by your, your voice. Say, I'm a speaking spirit. People say, well, I'm just not, I'm not that verbal, pastor. Well, get over it. You have to be. I walked into my friend's church in Penn Hills. Uh, uh, my cousin was one of the guys that worked there, St. Bartholomew's. And I just walked up. I was a pastor about 15 years ago. I walked up right through the center stage where all the Holy of Holy was. 
The guy yelled at me, get off that! That's the holy place! I said, no, 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 this is the holy place, bro. The holy place sitting on a stage and a little chest and a little bit of incense. God said, I will dwell in you and be in you. I don't dwell in bricks made with mortar. The holy place is your heart. That's where I live. And so I'm like, okay, well, so if we understand that faith that gives voice to what we believe, number two, the spirit of faith. Come on, say, I have it. The spirit of faith is awakened by knowing God's love for you. I can't wait to preach this next week. I'm just going to give you a little, little dose of it now. The spirit of faith is awakened by God's love. Romans 8 says it this way. Now here, here's what Paul says. Let me give you a, Paul's teaching out of Romans 8. Here's what he's telling us through the whole chapter. He's saying, you know, in so many words, he says in Corinthians and other places, eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, what God has prepared makes ready for those that love him. But God has revealed it to you by the spirit, right? So he wants you to get an understanding of God's love. And he says, you can have the Holy Spirit, and he'll reveal you what the will of God is. And he's going down through eight, and then he goes, Jesus gave himself for you. How shall she not also freely give you all things, right? Then he says, what's going to separate you from the love of God? Can disease, can sickness, can, can things pending, things to come, can death, can life? He says, God's love is big. God's love is long. God's love is wide. God's love is deep, Right? And he's telling about God's love, and he stops, and he says this in verse 31. What shall we say to these things? Come on, yes or no? Come on. I'm asking you. What shall we say to these things? What shall we say to this? Come on, shout everyone. Yes. yes. So he's saying God loves you. And, and some people go, well, you don't understand. He sinned, and she sinned, and she sinned. Who hasn't sinned? Anyone sinned last night? Raise your hand. See, at least you're honest, Bill. Come on, anyone sin last week? Bunch of liars. <laughs> Pastor called me a liar. No, 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 come on. Anyone sin last month? Anyone plan on sinning in the future? Well, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you don't want to do that. But you know what God says? He, he died for your sins, past, present, and future. And if you're a child of God, you're righteous. He sees you just like Jesus. That means he put you in a position of righteousness, and you're not going to lose your salvation. Even though we fall short, if we, have, if we have sin, we confess our faults, and he's faithful, forgive us, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, right? So thank God for Jesus, right? So I look at this, and I go, well, wait, 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 wait. So the Bible tells us that Galatians 5, 6 and this is why we see people stuck as Christians for 20 years, 30 years, 10 years. He says, Galatians 5, 6, For if we're in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything. I say, Pastor, that's kind of gross. Like babies being circumcised? He was talking about the works of the law of Galatians. There's nothing you can do to earn your salvation. And you think that, did we get circumcised before we were saved or after we were saved or during we were saved? He says, listen, it's not about that. There's nothing you can do in your flesh to earn salvation. And they were having a battle over circumcision. He says, only faith, look at this in the Amplified, only faith activated, energized, expressed, and working by love. What's that mean, Pastor? Listen, listen. Quick point here. Your faith won't even work until you understand how much God loves you. Your faith just won't work until you understand. You know, my, my, I say it this way. My little boy Judah was at Level Green Presbyterian. Kids went to, all three of them went to the preschool there. Really good preschool. But me and my wife were sitting on this little platform waiting to see this kid's event. Judah was four. Judah was sitting there. He, he's, he's a Valentine baby. I ain't going to call him up here again. I did last service. But are you here, Judah? Judah, where are you? Judah, if you're here, come up. I know. He's in, he's in class. Don't pull him out of class. I thought he took a smoke break or something. He's on. But, but, but Judah, I was like, where's Judah? He came running up last service. Hi, Dad. But, but Judah was sitting there, and he was gorgeous. When he was a little baby, he had this blonde hair, these huge blue eyes, and he had this real high-pitched Mickey Mouse voice. Hi, Dad. I was like, hi, Judah. Well, Judah's sitting here. He's four. This girl named Adeline. If you're the parents of Adeline and you're here today, I'm sorry, but this happened and you know it. 
so I'm sitting there like this, and me and my wife are sitting there, and the girl turns around. She got the little cheerleader outfit on. She goes, Judah, I love you. And Judah turns, looks at me and his mom, and he goes, I love you too? <laughs> and I'm thinking the four-year-old's trying to process love. And, and I go, wait a minute. I don't know if there's four-year-old infatuation, but she just told you she loves you, and Judah felt his response should be, I love you too. And I'm hoping, I don't think they'll ever date, so don't worry about that. But as I look at this, I go, wait a minute. Jesus tells us, God tells, John tells us all about this. And he says in verse 19 of John 4, we love him because he first loved us. Wait, 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 wait. I, you're here saying, I love you, God. That's why I came to church. Well, that doesn't get you points because God's love's never based on your performance. You can't work hard enough to earn God's love. You can't, I didn't smoke, I didn't drink, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't drink, I didn't chew, and I didn't date girls that do. That doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything to God. I'm thanking God for a good holy heritage, but the realization is it's not of my works and it's not my righteousness that got me the free gift of salvation. It's God's goodness that led me to repentance. So wait a minute, say he loves me. Come on, you got to verbalize and say, God loves me. While I was yet in sin, Christ died. This, my friend, is the gospel. This is the good news. While we were in, while we were in the flesh, but living in the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, we were doing rebellious things, running away from God, but he still, in all his agape, which is the God kind of unconditional love, he still passionately was pursuing you in the midst of your dark day. Come on, say, God is good. So God's looking down at you and going, I love you. And you're going, I do too. You might be at that place today. I think I do. I, I think I do. But God says, no, I need a choice from your free will to say yes. God, I'm all in. See, the reality of our response is not because what we do. Our response is I love him. Why? See, first love me. It's my response to a guy, a God, that created me for his purpose to do his will and to pray without ceasing, to rejoice every morning, to in everything give thanks because it's his will. Come on, say, I want God's will. This will help you. Look, John, 1 John 4, 16. This is one of my life. If you, if you don't get anything, I'll just write this down. Don't care if, if you ever come back, but, but you have to write down this scripture. It will change your life. Here's what it says, 1 John 4, 6. And we know. Do you know? And we understand. And we, do you recognize? Here, here's what hit me. Are you conscious of? With observation and experience and believe in faith and rely on God cherishes us. God loves us. He goes on to say all this stuff, but verse 18 says, For there's no fear in love, dread, anxiety, torment, does not exist. Full-grown love, mature love, turns out all fear. Fear has thoughts of tear, terror. Fear brings with it the thought of punishment, and it's afraid. But you haven't reached your complete maturity in God's love. See, we really want to awaken our faith, but your faith will never awaken until you know how much God loves you. And you know, I, I preach for years. Traveled all over the world before I came here and planted a few churches and spent time different nations. And, and here I am preaching here, I don't know, I'm 15, 13 years into it. I'm, I'm preaching the gospel. We're over there in the theater. We've been in seven buildings and six buildings at that time. And, and uh, set up, break down. And I come home from the theater that, that, that next morning, Monday morning, preacher hangover, tired, exhausted. And I get up and give my little penance. Because, see, I, I'm a recovering Catholic. I'm sorry. That's just kind of what I am. We just did a big concert at Mother of Sorrows, our worship team, huh? It's now called Our Lady of Joy. They just changed the name, amen? I'm, I'm just kidding. It was awesome, man. They were in there worshiping. Pastor Matt was kicking it. But, you know, I, here's what we do with God. We come to him with our stuff. 
of what we did. And, and I said, Lord, we had a great service today. It's Monday morning. I'm getting ready to shave. And I said, Lord, we had six people filled with the Holy Spirit. We had, we had uh, eight people gave their life to Jesus, and 32 people were in the new members class. As if, like, that today gives my, my performance and my evaluation is probably a B+. Plus. And that's kind of how I'm looking at it. And right before that, three, four weeks before, I, I was playing in the indoor soccer place, and I ripped my ACL right here. It just snapped. It pulled apart. And probably for three weeks, I was walking. I, actually, no, this was a lot longer time. But I was walking for a long time. I, to go up that little ledge, it was like pins and needles. This thing was, I got it looked at, and I was thinking, I'll get surgery, but let's just wait for a while. Let's see what the Lord will do. And I was just in pain, man. I was limping everywhere for about eight to nine months. And I woke up that morning, and, and I gave God, looking in the mirror, all my performance. And God says, hey, I hear him say this. If you never preach again, I'll still love you the same. And I went, what? No, no, stop. If you stop preaching today, there's nothing you can make me do to love you more or love you less. I love you like you love your little baby born, your Judah, your Gabriel, your Glory, like you love them. You would do anything for that child. I feel the same way toward you. And there's nothing you can do to make me love you more or make me love you less. I just love you because you're in Christ. I went back and I went, I went, wait a minute, I'm not going anywhere today. I said, I'm going to meditate on that. I grabbed my phone. I walked back to my bed and I remember I, I pulled my leg up in bed because I couldn't even move it. Any time it tweaked anyway, so I put it up. And I threw the sheet on it. It was so painful when I turned it right under here. And I turned on my phone. I, I, I hit David Crowder, right? Love songs. Jesus from the 70s. David Crowder, he is jealous for me. His love's like a hurricane. And the chorus goes, oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. So all of a sudden, I am unaware of his affections eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affection is for me oh how he loves me oh how he loves me and I'm listening to God's love and in the middle of receiving God's love something snaps in my leg my ACL reattaches to itself I jump out of bed all pain's gone and my legs like brand new come on say thank you Jesus you know something? I realize that my faith is working not by understanding how many confessions I did and how many sermons I preached and how many Bible readings I did. and how much, That would have to do with me just working for my stuff. But in salvation, when Christ died, he paid for my healing and he paid for my joy and he paid for my peace. And he was, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement needful to obtain peace was pushed on him at the crown of the cross. And all the anguish and the separation from the Father and the hurt and the pain was all placed in his body at the cross. And God treated Jesus like the worst sinner, yes. you and me. So he could, in exchange, treat us like his favorite son, his favorite daughter. There, my friend, is the good news. Do you believe it? There, my friend, is the good news that while you were dead in your sins, Christ died for you. And he said, he became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made and recreated to be the righteousness of God in Christ. Come on, shout, he loves me. So if God says you wake up your faith because your voice activated, the kingdom is voice activated. Everything that happens, happens by your pronunciations of words. Everything that happens is because John said it this way when he wrote about himself. Durante is a good singer. And Durante is the best. We've been doing this gig together for how long, man? 18 years all together or something? Long, long time, huh, dog? We're, we're brothers forever. We like, we eat Alfredo pasta's his favorite dish. I know that. No, but brother, I said, Drate, let's go get some ribs, dog. He said, I hate ribs. Let's get pasta. <laughs> is that true? Yep, it is. But you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that, that I'd say, God loves Zach. God loves Joey a lot. Right? God loves every, our bass player, our guitar players, our you. But I, Pastor Buck, am the disciple that Jesus loves. I, I write about myself. See, John, he's, he said, he said you're, you're all good, dog. But, but I, John, I, Pastor Buck, I'm the disciple that he loves. 
See, he, he wasn't like Peter. Peter, had, Peter was telling everyone how much he loved God. I love Jesus. I'll go to the end of the earth. I'll cut your ear off. I'll get out of the boat first. Jesus, I'm your man. I'll be with you even when they'll steal you. He, in that night, he divided him three times. But, but John was at the cross because he said, I, I, I'll be there with your mother. Jesus looked down while he's dying on the cross. And he sees John there. Mama's laid up on John. And he, Jesus nods his head and says, take care of my mother the disciple that Jesus loved. What happens when you begin to see yourself as the disciple that Jesus loved? Healing becomes easy. What happens when you see yourself the disciple that Jesus loved? Prosperity comes easy. What happens when you see Jesus as you're the disciple Jesus loved? Revelation comes easy. It's fun to pray all of a sudden. It's exciting. I love him because he, he first loved me. So today as we close, I ask you this question, a spirit of faith is awakened by your voice. A spirit of faith understands the love of God and meditates and speaks it. I'm deeply loved and I'm highly favored. And I feel God's presence. I feel his passion. I feel his power. And he said he's at work all the time creating in me energy and desire to do his will. A spirit of faith is awakened by worship. As we see this in Romans 8, it's interesting. I just told you everything that Paul says. And then he says in verse 31, he asks a question. You heard some preaching about the love of God. You heard some preaching about being voice activated in a speaking spirit. And then Paul would say this to you today. What shall we say to these things? Did you see that he looked for a a verbal? How many like the Steelers? Nobody this year. How many will like the Steelers next year? Maybe nobody. But, but see, I go to my father-in-law. He's an he's a OU Woo! Sooner. Be quiet, Brady. He grew up there too. But it, for 50-some years, he went to the OU game. And when I got married, we got in the car. We will be at the OU game. We march down the road behind the band. We go into the engineering firm. Uh, where, where all the engineers are with the engineering school. We eat a hamburger, a cheeseburger with mustard and pickles, and then we go down behind the band. We march into the stadium, and they go, Boomer, Sooner, Boomer, Sooner, Boomer. And it's like, okay, 120,000 people in the stadium, and by halftime, Wayne Allen can't talk. Her dad's screaming so loud, and Wayne's calm. He's cool. He's about this tall. He's like, he's like yelling, screaming. He's like, Aim, get the car. We got to go over here. He loses his voice with Barry, Bud, and Boo, and, and, and he just, he just, everything, he's all in. We come to church, look like we got diarrhea. The Lord's really moving on my heart today, brother. We get this weird language, hallelujah, brother. Look constipated. Then you go down to the Justin Bieber concert, you're all in, man. Your chest hairs are hanging out. You got gold on. You're like, woo, Justin, woo. Bringing sexy back, and you're all into it. Come on. How do you express your faith? Well, in church, I just don't do it that way. I wasn't raised that vocal, Pastor. You do it at the Steeler game. You do it at the Penguin game. You do it when you're watching Hallmark. right? I'm screaming. I'm yelling. My son kicked a goal. He was six. The lady said, your your husband's nuts. She said, his heart's going to explode. I'm yelling. The ball breaks out of the crowd. Gabriel's the only one. There's one goalie. There's my son. He hits the ball like this from about 20 yards out, and the goalie doesn't even move. He was like looking at something else. There's six. The ball rolls in the goal. I'm screaming, that's my son. Woo! Everyone's looking at me. Lady tells my husband, your, your husband's going to die of a heart attack. He's too excited. My face is red. I'm like yelling. It's like kicking and screaming the movie, you know. I thought it was the Olympics. It was just six-year-old soccer. And Gabe's real embarrassed. He puts his head down. He goes, Dad, you embarrassed me today. Why were you shouting like that? And I said, son, simple. Zephaniah 317. The Lord is a hero who saves. He rejoices over you with shouting and singing, son. 
He said, don't ever do that again. You know God's shouting over you. You know God's rejoicing over you. You know God's proud of you. You know God's smiling over you. He thinks you're the best. He thinks you're a winner. He knows you're going to win. And in faith, he's a God of faith. He sees the end of the story. And come on, say we win. So I look at this and I see that Abraham staggered not at the promise of God, but the life of faith grew strong in faith and gave glory to God. He considered God's promise. He knew it would come to pass. Why do we celebrate? Why do we pray? See, faith just does it. Nike got it right. Faith says, I'm just going to do it. You know? I'm gonna, I've seen people hold their hands up for two quarters at the Steeler game in the playoff. Drunk. Like, really? But then they come to church and all of a sudden something comes over them. They, they don't want to celebrate the creator of the universe. Faith celebrates. Faith rejoices. Faith prays without ceasing. Faith gives thanks all the time. Come on, right now, give thanks. Listen to the last scripture, Psalm 57. David says, my heart, O God, is quiet and confident. Now I can sing with passion your wonderful praises. Awake, O my soul, with music of his splendor song. Arise, my soul. Come on, say it with me. Arise, my soul, and sing his praises. Say, come on, self. My worship will awaken my da the dawn. Greeting the daybreak with my songs of praise. We're getting quieter. Say it loud, louder. Ready? Wherever I go, I will thank you, my God. Psalms 108, listen, say it together. Arise, my soul. Sing his praises. Awaken the dawn with my worship. Greeting the daybreak with my songs of light. Listen today, stand to your feet. Psalm 63, I love this, listen. Here's the reality, man, after you lived a couple years, you hit your 50s and you realize there's not a whole lot to rejoice about other than this. Because thy loving kindness is better than, remember that song in the 70s we sing? Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee, thus will I bless thee. While I live, I will lift up my hands. Come on, will you lift up your hands? Will you make a choice? Free will. Now, if you don't want to do it, keep them down. But you know what? I will too. I will, to, I will to be a giver. I will to love my wife. I will to pray for my kids. I will to be a prayer. I will to be the pastor God's called me to be. I will to be a good husband. I will to be a giver. I will to be generous. I will to be a praiser. I will to be a rejoicer. Come on, hold your hands up. You say, why? The scripture says, just do it. Yes. Come on, shout, I will. I will. I will bless the Lord while I live. You're going to do it. Come on, you're going you're gonna to do it, bro. Yes. <laughs> I will. Come on, shout, I will. I will. When it's time to worship, what if we came in here next week? It's time to worship. Everyone says, I will. I will. I will. See, some of y'all got tired and already put your hands down. But you know what? If, if, if one of the quarterbacks was here, you're like, I love you, dude. Come on, get your hands up. Don't let down. Don't let me down, dog. Listen, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips will praise thee. I will bless thee. I'll lift up my hands in the name. Here's all we can give to God today. Hebrews 13. By him, therefore, let us offer up the sacrifice a praise to God. How long? Why are you holding your hands up? Listen, continually. Let us hold up our hands. The sacrifice of break continually. And what is this? The, the, the Greek word is calves. But the fruit of our lip giving thanks to his name. How many can take right now? How many can take a three-minute praise break with me? Will you do it with me? Will you do it with me? I don't want to be a dead church. I want to be alive under God. I want to be the one that gives the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Come on, lift your hands up now.
God's here, amen? Come on, say, I have the spirit of faith. I'll be vocal. I'll be more undignified than this. I believe God's love. I speak God's love. I'm deeply loved. I'm highly favored. And I'm a worshiper. I pray without ceasing. I give thanks all the time. And I'll be at prayer this week. Would you bow your heads? Father, in Jesus' name, as I close this service with prayer, with every head bowed and every eye closed, with Heavenly Father looking on, there's a God who loves you. There's a God who died for you. And he said in his word that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't say religion gets you to heaven. He said it's a relationship. Knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior, as the Son of God, that he forgives all your sin. He's not mad at you. He says, today's your turning point. Today's your day for salvation. I'm going to pray in 10 seconds. But you would say here today, with nobody look around, just heaven looking down, you say, pray for me to know God, to know Jesus Christ in a personal way, to have peace with God today. That's you. Shoot your hand up right now. Shoot your hand up right now. Shoot your hand up right now. Thank you, 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 thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right there, thank you. Over there, thank you. Back there, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second row. Third. Thank you. Over there. Anybody else? Just hold your hand up real quick. Don't miss out on eternity. Don't miss out on the plan of God. Yes, sir. I see you. Come on. Let's all, let's all do what we preach today. Let's release our faith and let's wake up our spirit man right now. Ready? Let's do it with our mouths, everyone. And if you raise your hand or if you should have, do it like this. Ready? God, I believe you sent Jesus 
because you love me. So he died for me. He shed his blood for me. Today I make it personal. I receive your love. I receive your forgiveness. I say you're my Lord. You're my Savior. And I repent of doing it my way. Today I decree Jesus is my Lord, my Savior. Heaven is my home. I'm a new creature. And I awaken today in Jesus' name. Come on, give the Lord a shout if you believe that. We hope that you enjoyed today's message. And remember to like or subscribe to our channels. And we will see you next week. Whoever finds God finds life.